Hey everyone, Nick Simmons here, two-time Olympian and the CEO of Run Gum, and you guys are the best subscribers in the world. I appreciate all the questions that you guys have been sending me over on Instagram. Somehow, I'm gonna pat myself on the back here, somehow I've gotten to every single question that you guys have sent me. If you have a question for me about running or business or climbing or fishing or anything, nothing's off limits, ask me anything, but you have to do it over on my Instagram. Um, DM me and I'll make sure I get to it sooner or later. Um, last week was incredible. You guys sent me so many great questions. Um, and there was this theme that, I mean, every single question, not every single question, but like 50% of the questions could all be answered with one topic. There is a video I've been meaning to make because it is so important. It, it is the most important video I will make. Um, I'm not joking when I say that periodization is the most important thing that you're gonna learn. It's more important than the workouts, it's more important than the psychology, it's more important um, you know, than, than just about everything because it encompasses all of that. It is, is, there's no point in, in digging into any one of those specific areas if you don't understand how they fit into the whole puzzle that is periodization. Uh, this is what's going to allow you to kick better. This is what's going to allow you to bring your best race when it counts. This is what's going to allow you to visualize better and spread that energy throughout an entire season to, so that you don't peak too early. I mean, I can't overemphasize just how important periodization is. Um, it's what allowed me to run my best races when it mattered most in a championship setting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to walk you through... Um, kind of the more technical aspects of it. I'm also going to show you how I use periodization in my own seasons, in particular in the 2012 Olympic season when I ran my personal best uh, 142.95 for 800 meters for fifth at the Olympic Games. So let's start in my office. Here we go. All right, so what is periodization? You probably hear this term a lot. You hear coaches and trainers throw it around. Um, but what does it really mean? Well, in a nutshell, periodization is just taking your training and adjusting it throughout a year. You're not focused on um, a week or a month or even a season, you're focused on an entire year and you're adjusting it accordingly to hit the championship part of that season. So um, that's a, you know, a really broad way to say, be on when it counts. But if we go online, we can find a much more technical definition and even some charts that really explain what this concept of periodization is. So here it is from Wikipedia. Periodization is the systematic planning of athletic or physical training. The aim is to reach the best possible performance in the most important competition of the year. It involves progressive cycling of various aspects of a training program during a specific period. Now notice that said competition of the year, not competitions. It's extremely hard to peak for multiple competitions throughout the year. Um, and that's why the best athletes, the ones training for an Olympic Games, they're trying to peak for the Olympic Games. They're not trying to peak for some random race indoors. They are periodizing their training. Um, let's look at this chart actually. Breaking Muscle has a chart um, that kind of shows the relationship between volume, intensity, and technique. It does a really good job of showing how those three things relate to each other throughout a training cycle. So here in the beginning, you can see that volume is very, very high, um, but intensity and technique are low. That's the beginning of a training cycle. Um, as intensity and technique increase, the volume decreases. Now, everybody's lines are gonna be a little bit different, um, but this does do a, a really good job of kind of giving you that basic understanding of how these three things relate. Um, it is absolutely confusing looking at this. Again, I, I use periodization for 20 years as a competitive runner um, and 12 years as a professional runner to really hit it when it counts. And, and I'm having trouble making, making sense of this graph. So. Um, rather than get totally bogged down by the numbers and the graphs, I think it might be better uh, if we go to the whiteboard and I can illustrate how I used periodization throughout an entire season to really be on when it counted during championship running. Let's go to the whiteboard and check it out. All right, so I think it's gonna make a heck of a lot more sense if I just kind of walk you through what a year looked like for me as I was training as a professional. And let's pick 2012, because that was the best year I ever had. That's the year I made the uh, 2012 Olympic team and competed for Team USA at the London Olympic Games where I finished fifth with a personal best of 142.95. I was good at periodization. I was good at peaking at the right time and I wish I could take more credit for that, but a lot of that goes to Coach Rowan. Um, but what I was really good at doing was just 
understanding how each period, each phase of the training ultimately affects that final product, that final performance that you want to bring in a championship setting. Um, and so I put out my calendar year, how I used to think about it, um, and I'll walk you through what I was going through uh, mentally and physically in each one of these months. Now you'll notice my year starts in October. This is going to be different for every athlete. Uh, my championship that year, the Olympic Games, that was right here. That was in August. So I'm working backwards from August. And when you're setting up a proper periodization, you're going to want to work backwards from your championship meet. You can't work forwards towards it. Um, it's almost impossible to do that. So I started my year in October. Uh, in September of 2011, uh, I didn't run a step. I, I literally had just gotten done with a season, uh, had competed at the World Championships, and I didn't, I didn't do much except fish and drink beer. But come October, I started putting one foot in front of the other. I said, okay, I'm only a few months out from the, the Olympic trials, from the Olympic Games. I need to start getting back in shape. Now, a common mistake that, that people who are a little too eager make is they start training for the Olympics this very day, meaning they think they're about to, to race at the Olympic Games you know, on November 1st, and that is just not the case. That's just base phase, okay? And you'll hear me talking about base phase a lot. Base phase is, I used to call it, and actually Coach Roan, I used to call it, time on your feet. You're literally just logging miles. Um, I would start back really slow, maybe with just like a two or three mile run the first few days in October. Um, I wouldn't be doing workouts. I'm literally just trying to you know, shed the 10 to 15 pounds I put on during my time off. Um, I'm just a hobby jogger, essentially. Uh, it's not impressive. Um, in November, maybe I start adding some workouts. December, maybe some more honest workouts. I'm probably not in spikes during this phase. You know, I'm literally just trying to get back in shape. We had a phrase that we used to use that I loved. It was called, I'm getting in shape to get in shape, if that makes sense. And I would do that for two or three months. I'm literally just trying to get back in shape um, so that ultimately when I get into here, I can start doing some indoor workouts, um, some indoor racing. And I would, I would, I would schedule indoor races in Jan, February, March. Um, and this was mostly just to break up the training. I mean, in this part, you're training so hard. I was putting in 50, 60, 70 miles a week and I needed something to break up the training mentally and physically. And so I would actually schedule indoor races that I would train through. And I know a lot of you who watch me race indoors. Everyone thought I was just terrible at indoors. Uh, and I, I was, but only because I was training through the entire season. I don't think I ever bothered to taper for an indoor season because it just didn't matter to me. No one cares about indoors. I'm sorry, people who like indoors. No one cares about indoors. The money's not as good. Uh, it's boring. The air's too dry. It hurts your lungs. I just didn't care about it other than that I needed it as a part of my periodization. You know, so I'm going to call it indoor, but again, I didn't really think of it as a, as a season in and of itself. I, and I certainly wasn't trying to peak here. I wasn't trying to taper. I was just breaking up the monotony of the base phase and turning over the legs a bit, little bit to get me into what I would call the first sharpening phase. So right here, you begin to sharpen. And by sharpening, I mean you're in spikes, you're cranking those hard intervals, um, you're really starting to turn over and starting to get into race shape. You know, I knew that May and June, I would be in some early season meets. Actually, I think June was the Olympic trials. So, you know, I'm really trying to get fit to win races, fit to be competitive. I know I'm not exactly at 100%, but I'm really starting to get closer. Um, you know, in June, I ran the Olympic trials here at Hayward Field. Um, I ran 143.9 to win those Olympic trials. Um, 143.9, I mean, it was a very good time, so I think it's the fastest I ever actually ran on Hayward Field. So you'd think that's my peak. No, I was still not even peaked yet. I was still coming through the end of that base phase into the beginning of the sharpening phase. And really, right here, June, July, and August, that's when I was really entering those four to eight weeks that you can be absolutely on. Um, and again, I started just at the tail end of June. You only get maybe six weeks out of the year where you can truly be honed and sharp and lethal. And you have to choose championship season for those six weeks. You know, some people, they get their best six weeks in here and it's like, well, great. You just won a random indoor race. Congratulations. Here's your five bucks. Um, as an athlete that aspires to bring their best race at the most important time of year, it's incredibly important that you learn how to peak at the right time. Okay, so how do you do that? Um, 
you know, it, a lot of it's mental. A lot of it's just how you approach uh, training, you know, not trying to be a practice winner in the fall. Um, you know, trying to really bring a great, great product here in April, May, and June, you know, and, and into July and August. It's, uh, it's a lot of great coaching. You know, Roland, Coach Roland, he was okay with me, you know, kind of finishing dead last in some workouts and loafing through some workouts here. But if I, if I was phoning a workout in, in May, June, or July, he let me have it. You know, he let me have an earful. He said, hey, this is the time of year where I need you to focus. Um, weight, you know, I would, I would be 10 to 15 pounds over my ideal race weight here. And I would start dropping that weight when I started sharpening and I would be at target race weight um, when the championship season rolled around. But I could only hold that weight for a few weeks or I'd get sick. So uh, there's so many different things that go into this. Uh, I think if you wanted a really detailed picture, what you'd want to do is click the link below. Um, and I actually published my entire 2012 training log. I, I never kept a training log, but for some reason in 2012, I said, I need to keep a training log this season because this is going to be very, very important for me to look back on one day. And I did. I chronicled every single mile I ran, every single workout. I put it into a little book uh, called my 2012 training log. It's a great title. And I made that absolutely free for everyone. Click the link below and you can download that season's training log. I hope you enjoy it. There's definitely some good workouts in there. Um, that is a really, really macroscopic view of periodization. Um, if you want the microscopic view, check out the training log. Um, I think I would like to leave you guys with an analogy that really, really helped me um, in understanding just exactly how this works. This will be a metaphor that you can use that will really give you kind of a, a, an idea, an image in your head as you start sharpening that stick. Let's go. All right, this is my periodization metaphor. This is a stick, right? You are this stick. It's a very nice stick, but it's uh, a blunt object. It's not particularly useful. It's not sharp. It's not dangerous yet. This is just a blank stick. Um, what we want is a sharp stick, a lethal stick, a spear of sorts that at championship season will destroy people. That's what we want. And so the metaphor that we often use was sharpening the end of a stick. And as I do this, I take little tiny pieces, not trying to take it all at once. I just take little tiny slivers to make this into the end of a spear. That's what you want to do during your season. You want to get a little bit better, just a tiny bit better each knife stroke. That's a workout. That's a 200. That's a 400. Those are mile repeats. See, every little workout adds up to make it sharper and sharper and sharper. So as you can see, it's starting to take shape now. It went from the blank chunk of wood to what appears to be a spear. It's not exactly sharp yet, but it's getting closer. This represents that time of season when you're putting your spikes on and you're running those early races and you're breaking off all that rust. This is you starting to get ready for that event that is your specialty. You know, Maybe you're running a, a mile to test out your strength before you start focusing on the eight. Or maybe you're running you know, twos to try to bust off the rust. That's the sharpening that I was talking about. But of course, you're still not lethal. This is the beginning of your season. This is not the end of your season. All right. Now that's a spear. That thing is deadly. I mean, I'm telling you, that is sharp. Uh, you don't want to be hit with that. That's you. You are the spear. This is you in championship season. You started out as just a blank chunk of wood. You weren't particularly lethal. You weren't very sharp and deadly. And then after all that work, the sharpening, the base phase, you ended up as the tip of the spear. But that's fragile. Look how fragile that is. I can just see. I mean, that's what happens if you over sharpen the spear. Some people, they're so excited about getting that spear sharp, they start sharpening it in December or January, way before the championship season, and they break the tip of the spear. They get injured, they get a stress fracture, or they get sick, they get the flu, they get mono, they get some overuse injury. Don't be that person, okay? Remember, it's about slowly getting better and better, a little bit at a time, and it's really about imagining that a base, this is your base, and it's comprised of 70, 80% of the work that you're gonna do. The sharpening is much smaller. So now you know what I'm talking about when I mean be lethal at the right time. But do you know what I mean from a mental standpoint when I say you have to spread that energy over a long season, over a year or more? I'm gonna recommend a video. This is your homework. I'm gonna link a video right here. It is the most important video when it comes to how to mentally approach a season. This was my true strength. 
You know, I wasn't the fastest, I wasn't the strongest, I wasn't necessarily the most gifted physically, but mentally I knew how to approach a season. Watch this video, you'll be glad you did. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you leave comments below. Tell your friends I'm giving away all my secrets. And make sure you send me those questions on Instagram. Thanks.